So this week um, we're talking training during pregnancy, our last week, and I just want to give you a couple of other things to think about. So, and there may be things you may not have thought about before. So let's consider this. A breastfeeding woman will lose around 6% of her bone mineral density in the first six months of breastfeeding. And most of us breastfeed for about a year. So doing weights during her pregnancy, um, especially because when she's pregnant, she's 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 in a high progesterone state, um, which is essential for maintaining bone density. Um, we should be doing weights and we should be doing heavy weights in a manner that her core and pelvic floor can uh, tolerate. So you're not making symptoms worse. You know she's lifting up. You're monitored by a women's health physio. So um, working with a women's health physio is actually quite fundamental to like working with women, especially if you intend to continue training them through their pregnancy and especially if you could, uh, intend to continue training them after they've given birth, no matter how old their children are and how many weeks, years and months postnatal they are, if they are mums, then you need to have a good relationship with a women's health physio and you need to be okay talking about vaginas and pelvic floors and abdominal walls, okay? So without putting too fine a point of it, um, let's talk pelvic floor. So you need to uh, be working um, on a conscious and unconscious level with the pelvic floor and you have to be including this in the heavy weights you're giving your uh, pregnant women and your postnatal women with the supervision of a women's health physio. So deliberate or conscious pelvic floor work includes your Kegel, your lift, and your holding. It includes deliberate relaxation and letting it go. And it includes deliberate timing with movement. So I coach an exhale on exertion. So when my client is lifting a heavy weight off the ground, I am um, coaching that she's also lifting, breathing out, and she puts it down, she breathes in and relaxes, okay? But unconscious work can be just as powerful. Unconscious work includes balance training, like the pelvic floor musculature has to twitch and react when she's off balance. And I don't mean standing on one leg. I mean challenging her balance, so moving things from one plane to another, maybe standing on one leg and catching balls or give her a little push or use your BOSU balls and your power plates and your, your other training tools. Pelvic floor mobility work will also is also unconscious um, pelvic floor work. So I've talked about this before. Anytime your femur is working in three dimensions, um, that means uh, within the pelvis, that musculature is also bending, flexing, and becoming more versatile. Likewise, the low back and the upper back, if that's moving above the pelvis, that is pelvic floor and core training. It's unconscious work. So any movements, especially mobi mobility movements that use the arms and the legs in a three-dimensional plane is unconscious pelvic floor work, okay? And that can all be done while pregnant um, with or without your heavy lifting. Um, you also need to consider your client's current lifestyle, okay? Like as a basic, like is she, ask the questions, is she working full time or is she a stay at home mom? Is she working part time? Is the job sedentary? Is she, you know, working at a, at a nursery? I mean, like a plant nursery. So is she moving soil and that sort of thing? Or is she working at a desk job and sitting in front of a desk? Um, what are her stress levels? How many kids has she got at home? Um, what are the physical requirements of her jobs, including stay-at-home mothering? So as a basic rule of thumb, the more physical and the more stressful her lifestyle, the less physical and the less stressful your sessions are going to be. Uh, but you've still got your pelvic floor and your movement, blah, blah, blah. The less stressful and, and or the less movement in her lifestyle, the higher your loads and stresses in your um program and then you're going to have to balance that out between mental physical emotional stress okay all of them play a part all of them play a role is she sleeping blah 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 
So in addition to movements that make her life better, so in addition to, say, deadlifts, and front squats because that's what she's going to do a lot of in her lifestyle when she has a baby. Um, we also need to we also need to train for the physical um, role of mothering. So you can't stop at deadlifts and front squats. You've got to think what a mum does with those movements beyond that because it's almost always more versatile than um, the gym straight line, even weights version. So maybe your front squats will be done with a water ball and it wobbles. Maybe you'll be holding things in different positions and uneven weights and that sort of thing, just to make the movements you give her more specific to her tasks. Um, however, if she has a, you know, a three or a five-year-old at home, she's probably already doing those tasks tusks. So perhaps you'd be better off doing lying down work, deep core work, mobility work, okay? Because if she's folded over like this, you can take pressure off her pelvic floor and her system by unloading um, her posture, which I mean by improving and aligning her posture and making her mo more mobile. So as usual, send me your questions. If I have created more questions than answers for you right now, I apologize. Um, but hopefully those two little tidbits to think about will help you just be a little more lateral with your pregnancy training um, for your female clients.